My thoughts tonight is taken from Psalms 128. We have it on the screen, and maybe we can read it together, all right? Just six verses. Psalms 128, if you can't see it from behind, you can look at your Bible. Psalms 1 to 8, verse 1 says this, Blessed is everyone who fears the Lord, who walks in His ways. For you shall eat the fruit of the labor of your hands. You will be happy, and it shall be well with you. Your wife shall be as a fruitful vine in your house. Your children like olive shoots around your table. Behold, this man shall be blessed who fears the Lord. The Lord shall bless you from Zion, and may you see the welfare of Jerusalem all the days of your life. Indeed, may you see your children's children. This is a psalm for families, all right? also individuals. In that, we are taught that the prosperity of our families depends on the blessing of God. In this, we are taught that the only way to, that blessings come that helps us is to live in the fear of God and to be in obedience to Him. If you remember our theme for this year, which is taken from Isaiah chapter 50, verse 10, whom among you fears the Lord? Trust and obey. Those that do so shall be blessed. That's what we just read. Those that do so shall be blessed. They shall be prosperous and successful in their employment. Their relationships in the home shall be agreeable. They shall live to see their families brought up. You know, today, church, the word blessed is used in so many different ways, isn't it? We always hear someone say, bless you, or bless them, or he is blessed. Blessings to all. I, for one, that normally ends my email with the word blessings, you know, and I trust some of you do. So blessed are those who fear the Lord. So in order to have a blessed home, we all need to have a blessed family. Just as the church isn't the building, it's you, the people, that forms a church. The house isn't a home until it has a family that lives in it. You know, our home is like a sanctuary from the world. Don't you think so? I believe many of us desire to go home every by the end of the day you look forward to go home whether hopefully and i believe you go home and you're delighted to see your wife your children and some of us our pets because the pet dog will come running to you yeah that so the home is somewhere that you find such comfort in, that you find it's a sanctuary from all the things that you hear, you see in the world, when you come back, you are so relaxed because you are in the company of people who loves you, who are concerned for you, who supports you, who are in agreement to you. That's why the home is a wonderful place to be as afterwards when you go back home that's something that you would treasure now as long you must remember this as long as you have more of the world than God in the home it will never be a blessed home let me repeat that to get it sink into your mind Maybe I phrase it in a different way. If you have more of the world 
in your home than God, you can be sure your home will not be blessed. Maybe I put it the other way around. If you have more of God in your home than the world, you can be certain your home will be a blessed home. Your home will be a blessed home when you have more of God. So if you have the love of God, the hope of God, the peace of God, the joy of God, the Word of God, the Spirit of God in your home, you can be certain your home will be a blessed home. So tonight, Psalms 1 to 8 declares a blessed life is when God is at the center of your life. And when that happens, the work, the family, the personal lives become all blessed by God. So very quickly, for the next couple of minutes, I'm going to just touch on three points. What does it mean to be blessed? Number two, who are the blessed ones? And thirdly, how can we be blessed? So the first point, what does it mean to be blessed? People usually associate blessings with material and financial matters only. Don't you think so? Somehow, naturally, you know, when we see someone who have nice cars, oh, we say, oh, this guy is blessed. Or someone who have nice homes. Or maybe you get a chance to visit someone who lives in the penthouse of one of the prestigious condominium in town. You say, wow, you are indeed blessed. Or if someone somehow financially is so strong, you say, you are blessed. Now, don't get me wrong, you can have all these things, and true, you are blessed of the Lord because you are obedient to Him. But there are times or there are people who have these things, and yet they are not blessed because God is not in their lives. So to be blessed means to be able to possess the ability for success and prosperity in both material and in spiritual things also. This morning, I met a young, well, I call him young man. Young because compared to me. It's an acquaintance. I just got to know him. And I was talking to him. I found out he's about 39 years old. And he looked younger than that. And he asked how old I am. And I said, I'm much older than you. He said, how old? Then I said, I'm 60. He said, no, you're not. I showed him my IC. He said, I don't believe it. Well, I said, that's what it says on my IC, so believe it. Huh? All right? So we got to talk, you know. And somehow, we came to the point, I don't know how we came to this subject about cars. I ask him, what cars do you drive? He tells me, I have a Ferrari. Not only a Ferrari, a Lamborghini. I said, whoa. I said, you know what I drive? I said, what I drive? Oh, I, before I said what I drive, I said, how much does it cost to buy one of your tires? <laughs> so in my mind, I was just trying to figure out. And he said, Maybe about one pair, about 20 some thousand. So then I told him, You want to know what I drive? The car that I drive cannot even buy one of your tires because I just got it value. In fact, the friend that is here, he can vouch for that. It's worth only maybe about six to eight thousand in the market. So he said, No. Nah. But then I told him, You know, one of the reasons why I ask you this question is this You have a very nice car. I also have a car. Also nice to me, all right? So I say, both function in its own way. It gets us where we want. It's just that it's different value. But the important thing is this. You are contented with your car, and I'm very contented with my Kalisa. 
you know. And I don't think I can drive in your car because I won't feel comfortable because that's not where I am. But the important thing is, I'm contented. And you know what? The next question I ask him, somehow I felt I needed to ask him. I said, you are, you are blessed, you know. I noticed somehow, probably you are a very successful person. What faith do you believe in? And he told me, I'm a Christian. I said, oh, really? I said, do you, which church you go to? Oh, I don't go to church. But back home, when I'm in East Malaysia, I do that. So I said, what happened? Now, it's my first time. Again, I didn't want to probe so much. But in cutting it short, all I said to him, you know what? You, you are so blessed. You are, in one sense, so much in control of your life, materially and financially. But you know what? You are missing that part that is the most important, that is God in your life. But somehow he told me, yeah, I don't go to church now because of, you know, certain things. I said, whatever it is, come to church. I said, come to my church. Come, you know. So I said, okay, I will text you and I will invite you and you come and let God come back into your life. That you remember, to be blessed is where you are materially well, spiritually also it is well with your life. So I'm praying, I'm praying that he will come and I will have a chance to talk to him more. So church, to be blessed speaks of a rich and abundant life from God in four areas. One, physically, all right? We're going to just quickly look at some scriptures. Deuteronomy 15, 14 says this, However, there will be no poor among you, for the Lord will greatly bless you in the land which the Lord your God has given you for an inheritance to possess. Bless physically. God provides for our every physical need. God blesses with the basic necessities of life. Like I say, we thank God. We are really blessed. Every meal, I don't think anyone here in this room you need to go back for food. I don't think, I could be wrong, but I certainly don't think anyone in this room would need to go to your neighbor and ask them for food because you don't have anything on your table. But if I'm wrong, I stand to be corrected. Please come and tell me, Pastor, I think you're wrong. Then I, I know we need to help you, all right? Mentally, Isaiah 26, 3 says this, You will keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on you because he trusts in you. To be blessed of God, we have the peace of God. We have peace with God. And it's so important for us to have the peace of God in our mind and in our soul. Emotionally, Psalms 146 verse 5 says this, Blessed is he who has the God of Jacob for his help, whose hope is in the Lord his God. We have this hope, this hope in God. And lastly, spiritually, Ephesians 1.3 says this, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus. So tonight, what does it mean to be blessed? That means in those four areas, God takes care of us physically, mentally, emotionally, spiritually. Next, who are the blessed? Who are the blessed? Who are they? The Bible is very clear on this. I picked up five. In fact, there could be more. I picked up five. The Bible says in Psalms 1.1, Blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stands in the path of sinners, nor sits in the seats of scoffers. This is the man who will be blessed. One that will not walk in the counsel of the ungodly. 
If you're one that doesn't walk in the counsel of the ungodly, the wicked, the evil one, you are a blessed person. Psalms 32 verse 1 says this, Blessed is he whose transgression is forgiven, whose sin is covered. Every morning, we should get up and say, I am a blessed person because my sins are forgiven. My transgression is forgiven. I am a blessed person. Thank you, Jesus, for dying on the cross for me. Thank you, God, for salvation upon my life. And when you recognize that, you will know that you are a blessed person. Psalms 34 verse 8. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man who takes refuge in Him. You and I know who we can run to. Who is our refuge? Who is our strong tower? The Lord is our refuge. We are so blessed. We are a blessed person because we know who is our refuge. Fourthly, Psalms 84 verse 5. Blessed is the man whose strength is in you. We are blessed because we know that Jesus is our strength. He is our wisdom. He's our way. He's the one that we can find strength from. That's why you are blessed. And lastly, Psalms 119 verse 1 says this, Blessed are those whose way is blameless, who walk in the law of the Lord. Who is a blessed man? Who are the blessed? The five scriptures there are there. Church, tonight, I want you to remember this. True blessedness is what you are in the Lord rather than what you have in the world. I repeat that. True blessedness is what you are in the Lord than what you have in this world. Isn't that true? When you know your life is in the Lord, there's nothing else. Whatever it is, you know you are a blessed person. To know who you are in Christ is true blessedness. It doesn't matter whether you have much or little, but whatever it is, when you are contented with what you have, you will recognize you are a blessed person. Lastly, how can you and I be blessed? How? The first one, the condition of blessedness lies in our willingness to be obedient to God and His Word. We must be obedient to God and His Word. When you are obedient to God and what He says, you will be blessed. There's no two way about it. God is a promise keeper. And if you keep to what He says and do what He says, you will be blessed. That's what Psalms 128 verse 1 says. We read that. Blessed is everyone who fears the Lord, who walks in His ways. Number two, blessedness comes when our lives are rooted and grounded in God and His words. Deuteronomy 26, 11, 26 says this, See, 
I am setting before you today a blessing and a curse. The blessing if you obey the commandments of the Lord your God. And thirdly, you know you are blessed when your conscience is clean and you are at peace with God and with men. That's why Acts 24, 16 says, In this I do, I always strive to have a clear conscience before God and towards men. So the key thing here is, you want to be blessed? Be obedient. Be obedient. Be obedient to God. Be obedient and to walk in His ways and to do what He commands in His Word. And what happens when we are obedient to God? What happens when we walk in His ways? What happens when we follow His commandments? The Psalms that we read in 128, verse 2 says this, We will be blessed where? At our work. We'll be blessed at work. For verse 2 says this, For you shall eat the fruit of the labor of your hands. And you will be happy, and it shall be well with you. God always intended work to us to be a blessing. I think sometimes some of us see it the other way around. God intended work to be a blessing. That's why you and I, every one of us, must work. It can be different kind, different nature, but we must work. Genesis chapter 2, verse 15 says this, the Lord God took the man and put him in the garden of Eden to tilt it and to keep it. You and I know after man sinned and judgment came upon man, work became heavy and burdensome. Someone says that, some statistics say that by the age of 40, most people are sick, tired, and miserable of their work. <laughs> I was trying to find a, a, a cutting that I read but I just couldn't find it that it talks about at different age what does work means to you I tried but I couldn't but nevertheless alright listen to this work is a blessing and what do you say? great I got your silent amen <laughs> work is a blessing when life is centered on God. That's very important. Word is a blessing when life is centered on God. Your years of labors will bring happiness and joy to you and to your family. God may not give us all that we want, but He will certainly certainly, certainly, certainly see that we have all that we need. Don't you think so? Psalms 37, 25 says this. It's not on the screen. I have been young and now I am old. Yet I have not seen the righteous forgiven, forsaken, nor their offspring begging bread. Philippians 4, 19 says this. But my God shall supply every need according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. Church, tonight, God guarantees us that if we get our focus right, he will take care of us. So when we obey the Lord, follow his commandment, we'll be blessed at work. What's the next one? We'll be blessed at home. Psalms 1283 says this, And your wife shall be a fruitful wine in your house, your children like olive shoots around your table. We are blessed, we will be blessed with a godly wife. You know, what a blessing, or even a godly husband, what a blessing it is to have a companion that not only complements the house, but completes it. 
Proverbs 31.10 says this, Who can find a virtuous woman? For her worth is far above rubies. Psalms 128 verse 6, We are blessed at home because we see the blessings of godly children. This is one scripture verse that I hold dear to my heart. Psalms 128 verse 6. This promise, I hold it in my heart. Every one of us have desires of different things. But this is a desire of mine. And I believe my wife's too. That one day, we will see our children's children. Those of you who are parents, I see Lily smiling. That we always, when we have children, we will always, step one, pray for them to have a partner, a Christian, a girlfriend. The next stage, we will pray that they, in God's will, they get married. And the third stage, they will have children. And I pray that I will live the day, the Lord willing, will grant me the day. Darren is not here, so that's why I can say it. <laughs> that I will see his children. And that it's true. It is true. That's my desire that I will see my children's children. And that's a promise that I will claim. And if you have children, Pastor Li Ping is closing her eyes. Lord, that's my desire too. All right? <laughs> she, she's in deep meditation there. I have to say something about her because she's closing her eyes. Amen. I agree to that too. Hallelujah. And lastly, <laughs> we will be blessed in personal life. All right, Psalms verse 4 says this, 128. Behold, this man shall be blessed who fears the Lord. Friends, this man, this woman that refers to all of us is just not any ordinary man or woman, but one who fears the Lord. It means that you and I need to love God Respect God, revere God, honor God, have a deep appreciation for God. And out of that reverent love for God, all blessings will flow to and through you in your life so that it will flow out to others and the family. This man will be blessed in what he does. He will be successful. He will glorify and honor God. And in conclusion tonight, if somehow your mind was drifting somewhere, come back and all you need to hear is this statement. The blessed life is conditioned upon the God-centered life. That's why I appreciated the last chorus that Pastor Tab and the worship team sang. Jesus at the center of it all. Or Jesus be the center of it all. When God is at the center of your life, like the chorus says, everything around it, everything that pertains to your wife, to your life, will be blessed. When your life is centered upon God's word, God's will, it will become a wonderfully blessed life that not only affects your workplace, your business, your home, and your family, and your life. Tonight, in conclusion, all of us desire to be blessed. And God will bless us. Without a shadow of doubt, God even desires 
to bless you because he is a good heavenly father who loves his children so much that he desires that you be blessed and all he expects you and I to do is to be obedient to him to follow what he commands us to do and when we do that you will you will live a life that is blessed of the Lord and as we bow our heads to this evening we always believe here in Calvary Church when the Word of God is shared to you we give you an opportunity to respond to God and to His Word and shortly we will open up the altars for you to respond and the reason why we open the altar is so that if God is speaking to you or if there's an area that you are wanting God to help you that step from where you are seated to the altar the minute you get up it is an acknowledgement of your heart to say God with my heart I believe that you're going to do something you're going to help me and by my walking out is that expression of my faith in you that you will help me so tonight before we open the altar two groups two different approach that I'm sharing with you for you to respond one is are you somehow at one point saying God somehow I feel my life does not see your blessings maybe it has to do in a, to, with an area of your obedience to God maybe it's an area of your life that you need to do something that you need God to help you to correct or maybe there's a habit somehow in your life that is not pleasing to God and that's what withholds the blessing of God in your life maybe in your home somehow there's this strained relationship with, it could be your spouse it could be with your children it could be with someone something that you have to deal with something that you have to ask God to help you maybe it's in your workplace maybe it's in your business there's a practice that somehow is not pleasing to God maybe you need to do something about that I don't know but you do so if there's any of this area that you are asking God I desire your blessings and now you are revealing this area to me and I want to respond and I will go to the altar in respond to this need that's one area another area which I really 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 ponder hard is this to open this for your response we have been blessed I believe many of us that are seated here are blessed of the Lord but somehow the blessings that we receive it stays where we are I like the phrase that hidden treasure has on its door blessed to be a blessing God has a purpose in blessing you so that you can be a 
blessing. Friends, I'm not just talking about material blessing. That God bless you and you want to bless someone, share with someone, that is great. But I am more concerned that today you and I enjoy this wonderful relationship with God. We receive the wonderful spiritual blessings of God. But yet, but yet, we don't share. We don't talk. We don't tell others. But you know, if you are one that is experiencing the goodness of God, the blessings of God in your life, I tell you, you can't help but want to tell someone who is in need that they can too come and sit where you are and hear the wonderful word and hear the blessings and receive the blessings of God, the healing that comes from God. You know, recently, recently, someone gave me a contact from Penang. I don't know this person, but the pastor called me and said, can you call this family and invite them to church? They do not know Jesus Christ. I say, sure. That happened last week. So I text this lady to say, I got your name from so-and-so and like to invite you to church. Would you like to come? She said, can I bring my twin daughters and my 10-month-old baby? I say, sure. We have wonderful facilities to help them out too. And in short, she said, yes, I will come. Because it's the first time coming to church, I made sure that she has a parking, was there to meet her. She came to church. We took the children to the CW. The children after service said they enjoyed it. And this lady came into the visitor's lounge. The team got to talk to her. And I got to talk to her too before she left. But to cut it short, just the basic thing, I told her, would you like Jesus to help you? Because she shared with me of a home situation. I said, Jesus can help you in your home situation. Jesus can be that help that you are looking for. And at the end of it, she said, yes, I want to trust in Jesus. She gave her heart to Jesus Christ. And I believe she's going to come back tomorrow. Amen. How did this happen? Because the friend in Penang cares for this lady and her family. The friend in Penang experienced the wonderful blessings of God. And she knows she can be helped because Jesus can help her through her situation. And I believe her home will be transformed when she continues to believe and trust Jesus in her home. So tonight, my dear friends, let us not just enjoy the blessings of God for ourselves. Let us, let us tell uh, people what Jesus can do in their lives as much as what He has done in your life. That's why I say every morning when we get up, how wonderful it is to know that my sins are forgiven. That if I go tomorrow, I will not fear because I know where I am going. I have that blessed hope. And let's share that with the many people that we know. It could be your family members, your colleagues, your neighbors, your friends. And what is the most beautiful thing is to see them sitting in church with you one day we need to tell we need to share and as Pastor Tap sings the chorus again we're going to open the altar if you are one who says yes Father you have blessed me and now I want to be a blessing 
I want to share whenever the opportunity comes my way to tell people what you have done for me and I will not keep it to myself but I will share it I will tell it in fact everyone should be at this altar but you decide you make the commitment to the Lord and like the first group you have a need you are asking God Father bless me but somehow this is an area of my life I need to do something help me to correct it that I can receive the blessings from you and as we stand let's stand and Pastor Tab lead us in this worship chorus and the altar is open don't wait and let's come and receive from the Lord this evening Father tonight we thank you for each one that is standing here at the altar God you know what is in their hearts as they stand here they are acknowledging that you are their source of help you are their source of blessing you are the one they can count on and no one and nothing else and they recognize whatever it is that somehow if that's a hindrance that hinders your blessings to flow into your life tonight we pray that whatever it is it will be God it will be released they will receive the blessings of God into their lives into their homes into their business into their world the blessings of God will flow into their life because tonight they recognize they are surrendering their lives to you and they are saying Jesus Jesus be the center of my life and tonight we thank you God for the hands that have been lifted and maybe right now all of us just pray this prayer to encourage those that lift their hands to pray this prayer for those who lifted their hands sisters repeat this prayer together and all of us can say it together right now say dear Jesus, dear dear Jesus I thank you I thank you for your love for, your love, for, your love, for me for me I know I know you have a plan you have a plan and a purpose and a purpose for my life for my life tonight tonight I believe I believe you are you are the son of God the son of God you came down to earth you came down to earth born of a virgin birth born of a virgin birth lived a sinless life lived a sinless life Died on the cross, died on the cross for my sins. For my sins. You rose from the dead. You rose from the dead. And today, and today, you are alive. You are alive. Right now, right now, dear Jesus, dear Jesus, come, come into my life. Into my life. Be my savior. Be my savior. Be my lord. Be my lord. I surrender. I surrender my life to you. My life to you. I thank you. I thank you. I. Believe, I believe by your grace, by your grace, I will, I will lift my life, lift my life, pleasing to you, pleasing to you. I thank you, I thank you. I pray, I pray, and ask, and ask in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, Amen, Amen.